to St. Thomas Aquinas Parish in Alpharetta, Georgia. I'm Father Paul Burney, a priest of the Archdiocese of Atlanta. I have been here in residence for a number of years, and I extend that welcome to you as well from our pastor, Monsignor Dan Stack, and our parochial vicar, Father Roberto Herrera. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter, and it's good to have you with us as we hear God's word, reminding us that Jesus is way, truth, and life. And as we celebrate his Eucharist, in which we come to recognize him in the breaking of the bread. I will not forget you. Be with us, you say. Do not be afraid. Take hold of us, our hearts, our minds, our whole being. Make us your own. Now is the time. Spirit of love, crush the pain of hatred. Spirit of hope, stand Trust in the rich mercy of our God. Lord Jesus, you are the way that leads to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Christ Jesus, you are the truth, enlightening our minds. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the life that has destroyed the power of death. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, 
in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on you do know him, and you have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will do greater ones than these, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. No matter what our governor says, I still believe it's uh, more important to listen to the scientists. And so my hair may get down to the middle of my back, but it's uh, better to be prudent. <laughs> so I apologize to my stylist. Sorry, Sharon. You're going to have a lot of work in a couple weeks. Most of us get through each day without being bothered by the bigger questions of life itself. What's the point of being here? It can take all our time and energy merely to cope with what each day brings. And we're happy to leave those bigger questions about the purpose of life to the philosophers and theologians. There are times though when we are forced to pause because something happens that throws our routine into question. Like the sudden death of someone very close to us, which leaves this huge absence. Actually, this time of quarantine and isolation, so out of the normal daily routine, perhaps it's just such a time. Questions arise about the meaning of life itself. We wonder where we're going, if anywhere. What direction do we take when our very sense of direction seems to have gone? We might feel that we're going round and round in circles and really not getting anywhere. These experiences make us question our own direction in life and in today's Gospel, John shows us that it's no different for the disciples. As he speaks these words to his closest friends at the Last Supper, 
Jesus knows that he's about to leave them. He tells them not to be afraid, for he's going to prepare a place for them, and he will return to take them with him. Thomas voices their problem. What direction are they going to take in Jesus' absence? What will they do when he leaves them? Well, what Jesus does not do is give his disciples a theology handbook that will answer all their questions about God. He doesn't hand them a book detailing every law with an index classifying every sin. There are some who might wish that he did, but clearly that is not his way. There are no maps into the future with specific routes clearly marked. Jesus simply points to himself. I am the way and the truth and the life. He alone is the gateway to God act the access to the Father. Jesus is the way by which we travel to the fullness of God. He does not say, I have a way, but I am the way. This is not an easy saying. It means we must have a personal, living, daily relationship with Him. Only when we are united with Him can we reach the Father? Because, as he says, he and the Father are one. We are not speaking about the unknown God of the Greeks or the invisible God of the Jews. We're speaking about the God who has made himself known in the person of Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus is the face of God, the Word of God, the heart of God. God is inseparable from Jesus, as the Father is inseparable from the Son. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you know me, you know my Father also. Jesus is the truth. He not only speaks the truth, but the fullness of truth is found in him alone. The truth is not some abstract system of thought, but it's found in the person of Jesus. The truth is not a theory, it is a person. Jesus is the truth about God, as he is also the truth about humanity. The one who walked the roads of Palestine and ate with sinners is God's gift of his true self to us. As God looked to Jesus to reveal his true self, we look to Jesus to reveal God. He is the truest icon of God. Jesus is the life. As John announced at the beginning of his gospel, through him all things came to be. Not one thing had its being, but through him. All that came to be had life in him. We exist because of Jesus. Our very life is his gift. This is why we regard life as sacred from its beginning and conception to its natural end. We see it not as an accident of fate, but as a unique example of God's gift. No one is regarded as a mistake by the gospel. Others may see some people as a large mistake, but the gospel does not. For we are clothed with a unique dignity. Jesus is our life, and we all have life in him. 
But does all this help to give us direction? Or do we remain as puzzled as the disciples? The disciples learn soon after Jesus leaves them that they don't have answers to everything. As we learn from the early challenges to the community, like the one we heard about today in the Gospel, where the Greek widows were being neglected and needed attention. They all have to work together to find a way forward. They do. They pray. And they realize, let's take some men, and actually some women in the early days as well. Let's give them the task of attending to the poor and the needy. Let's make that their first priority. There are many things that Jesus did not tell them. And they have to try to face the future together with honesty and humility. Trusting that somehow the way, the truth, and the life will lead them. Jesus trusts his followers down the ages to face the confusion of daily living in the world. Which is why he doesn't leave us answers to everything. There's still a lot of working out to be done. Looking then to Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life doesn't actually solve every question effortlessly. But Jesus knew that. What it does is to make it possible to face the questions, the questions of daily life. And maybe, just maybe, to be unafraid if some of them go unanswered. So we respond in faith to the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and forgiven. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting that God hears and answers the prayers of those who turn to him in faith, we pray. For the people of God, called out of darkness to bear witness to the gospel, for life rooted in prayer and in service. We pray, unite us in love, O Lord. Unite, unite us in love, love, O Lord. For those who exercise leadership in our world, for the most vulnerable in our society, for the elderly and the orphaned, for widows and widowers, we pray. Unite, Unite us in love, O oh Lord. For all mothers and those who love the mother's care and compassion, for mothers isolated from their children and grandchildren during this pandemic. We pray. Unite us in love, O oh Lord. For the church in Atlanta, welcoming a new archbishop for our parish community, for the hungry, for those looking for work, and for all in need, for our elect and candidates who await sacraments of initiation, we pray. You guide us in love, O oh God. For those whose hearts are troubled, for wholeness and hope, for those who are long-suffering, for nurses, physicians, and surgeons in their efforts to tend to the sick with mercy and understanding. 
for our deceased relatives and friends. We pray. Unite us in the love of the Lord. In your house, O oh God, there are many dwelling places. And your Son has gone to prepare a place for us, that where he is, there also we may be. May the darkness of despair and anguish in our lives be forever shattered by your marvelous light of Easter joy. All this through Christ our Lord. Mm -hmm. Oh. 
Take this all of you and pray to me. For this is the child of my blood, the blood of the new eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Fullness of your glory, 
through Christ our Lord, through whom you restore the world. All that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We have been told we 
Begotten by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. 
Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorify God with your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Yeah.